It is a tie this week for the dirtiest dining between two repeat offenders, both of them barely avoiding a shutdown. Well, good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us on TV, Android TV, or wherever you're streaming us right now. I'm Todd Quinones. And I'm Trisha Keen. 13 Chief Investigator Darcy Spears has more on these two offenders, plus a cockroach infestation closure in tonight's dirty dining. Celebrities and accolades fill the wall of fame at Corey's Mediterranean restaurant in the Village Square Shopping Center on Sahara and Ford Apache. But the restaurant is also becoming infamous as it's now a repeat offender. Hi, I'm Darcy Spears from Channel 13. We're here because you guys are on Dirty Dining again. Corey's is back for a second helping of Dirty Dining with a 38 demerit C grade on its October 1st inspection. That's a lot of demerits and a tough grade to be dealing with when you're already limited in capacity. So what was it like to, you know, get this and then rebound from it? Um, you know, considering that a lot of the things like were in the kitchen, um, you know, they're, they're hard workers back there and they've been with us for a while. So they were able to just um, comprehend it well and understand that they got to just fix whatever needed to be fixed. And they did. On October 9th, Corey's was back to a zero demerit A grade. Well, a lot of it was in the back of the house. There was like a broken fridge. On inspection day, a reach in cooler was unable to hold a safe temperature. So gyro meat, cut tomatoes, stuffed grape leaves, cooked garlic spread and cut lettuce were compromised. Much of it had to be thrown out. And that's not all the food that went into the garbage. Like they had a multiple to go containers of ready to eat veggie and meat moussaka in the cooler that were more than seven days old and had to be thrown out. Were you not aware of that? No, I wasn't. Okay. Yeah. Other violations included improper hand washing, improper food storage, and a floor dirty with old food. Old wine bottles were being reused for house-made sangria and yogurt beverages. Raw ground meats were being prepped next to ready-to-eat jalapeno sauce. And there was no designated person in charge knowledgeable in food safety when the inspector arrived. Yeah, I mean, it's upsetting because people love our food. Like, we're like the best Lebanese restaurant in town. And things like this won't happen, you know. Um, it's unfortunate that it did happen. But um, we're hard workers here, and we don't want to discourage anyone not to come and eat here because, um, you know, things happen, and I'm sorry it happened. Um, but we, you know, we will stay on top of things. Owner Marie's Khoury added to that in a statement, writing, It's been a hard six months for us with the coronavirus. We've implemented all of the governor's recommendations, initially switching to to-go orders in order to keep the staff working without having to lay anyone off. Even though we're allowed 50 percent capacity, we're doing less than that to keep the tables six feet apart. Corey says they're making sure their dining experience is the highest quality with the best service and safety in mind, adding what happened with the health department was not a normal day for us. Quality Seafood on Flamingo and Jones celebrated its first dirty dining anniversary by becoming a repeat offender. You got a 38 demerit C grade. What happened with that? Nothing. Owner Tommy Wren says most of the issues were in their unpermitted processing area next door. That's the same thing that they were having issues with last year when you guys were on Dirty Dining the first I time. I know, but the thing the coronavirus, who knows what happened to Fisher? Nobody wants to put money down on this time. On the seafood market's September 29th inspection, inspectors found a couple of odd things. Approximately 80 containers of jarred chili paste in a cooler labeled only with a phone number, making it impossible for the health district to verify if it came from an approved source. 20 more jars had no labels at all. Inspectors were told the chili paste is all for the owner's wife. We have the one of refrigeration on our own food. You guys like chili paste that much? 80 containers? We do, because that one we're getting from the far away from, far away from my friend to make it. But what happened, that one we own the food. We don't sell in that. There was also a sourcing issue with water the market is adding to its live seafood tanks. Well, they said that there were large containers of ocean water from California. No, it's not ocean water from California. I mix the water. The day I was in California, my friends, my employee, they don't know. 
Wren said it was a misunderstanding due to a possible language barrier. Inspectors took issue with the water because the market is supposed to use potable water from an approved source so the health district can ensure it's safe. Other violations included an open container of red salted jellyfish stored on the floor at room temperature. That was thrown out. So was unidentified meat stored in plastic t-shirt bags. Food cutting shears and knives were rusty and in need of replacement. Display shelves were rusty too. The grade card wasn't posted, cutting boards were filthy, and the mop bucket was filled with yellow mold and a foul odor. There was also no soap in the employee restroom and multiple flies in the facility. Oh, I don't see any flies here. But moments later... I just saw a fly. There was just a fly in here, Tommy. Look, at, we've got the, we got the tech control right there. I see the zapper. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He says they have to keep their doors open to keep the air inside fresh. We cannot keep the air here, bad air here. It will kill the people. We will get more people get coronavirus. Due to consecutive sea downgrades on routine inspections, quality seafood is now in the health district's administrative process and must undergo intervention training. Wren says he just signed a new rental contract and will be remodeling and applying for a new health permit. As for imminent health hazard closures, Mara's Crazy Fruits on Owens and Pecos was shut down September 29th for a cockroach and ant infestation. There were also hand washing violations, dirty shelves and dirty floors. It reopened October 3rd with a zero demerit A grade. Mara's owner says the inspection happened the first day she was back on the job after battling COVID. She'd left the store with someone who she says she thought she could trust but that person let her down. For more from her, plus an imminent health hazard closure at the Las Vegas Superstore, head to our website at KTNV.com. Darcy Spears, 13 Investigates.